For many of us, video games are a relaxing experience. After a long hard day of work at the business factory, there's nothing more relaxing than coming home, flinging yourself on the couch and being annihilated by some Red Bull fueled 12 year olds on Fortnite. In all seriousness, if the pandemic has proved one thing, it's that video games are one of the better ways to combat stress. There are certainly some games out there that are intentionally designed to heighten your stress levels, cause unnecessary worry and basically just give you some kind of headache. It's these that we are celebrating today. These are the games that have features, be they story or mechanical, that are designed solely to reach inside your head and whisk up your poor mind like some eggs. So if you fancy brain omelette for lunch today, then boy oh boy do we have some games for you. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump and here are 10 video games that mess with the player. Number 10, Super Mario Bros 3. Our first entry is a reminder that a game doesn't have to do much to really, really annoy you. In the third instalment of Super Mario Bros, the world's sexiest plumbers have to once again do battle with an evil tortoise dragon lizard man and rescue Princess Peach. Or Princess Toadstool if you want to get pre-1993 in the West about this. After fearlessly battling Koopas, Bloopers and any other enemies that don't rhyme, you beat up big boy Bowser, rescue the princess and save the day. Or at least, that's what you think. After defeating Triple B, the princess comes over to congratulate you before informing you that our princess is in another castle. She then goes back on herself revealing that she was in fact just kidding. Well, how about next time you don't kid around your majesty? Do you have any idea what I've been through to get here? I thought a blooming mushroom in a shoe for you. Obviously this is a clever play on Toad's infamous catchphrase from the first game, but after going through a gruelling quest that's taken hours of your life and definitely given you arthritis in both thumbs, maybe now isn't the best time for some hashtag banter. Whiffy banter. Oh, for Number nine, Rayman Legends. Mr. Raymond Man's most recent home console adventure was 2013's critically lauded Rayman Legends. Critics even praised the Wii U functionality of the game, so you know it has to be good. That being said, the final level is an absolute pain in the backside. To put it simply, Rayman Legends goes completely mental in its final stage. As you run and jump across the various platforms, the game does all manner of fun things, such as flipping the level upside down, splitting the screen into dozens of tiny screens and reducing the clarity so the titular character is less Ray Man and more Ray Pixel. What's more, none of the rest of the game is like this. This is the only time visual buffoonery occurs to nearly this extent, and it's all taking place during the last thing you have to do before you can put the game away and enter a nice long period of recovery. We all love a challenge, but throwing something this hard at players so close to the end of a relatively simple game should be reclassified as a form of torture under the Geneva Convention. Number 8, Fable 3. Sometimes it feels like Peter Molyneux's entire existence is designed to mess with gamers. The former baked bean salesman has been winding us up for years with overhyped titles, broken promises and something about a cube, which we won't go into because we'll get cross and start throwing things. Yeah. Molyneux loves to mess around with gaming conventions, for better or worse, Sanctuary is basically a fancy 3D version of the pause menu. It's even accessed via the normal pause button. Which begs the question, why not just have a pause menu? The answer is because Big Pete loves to screw with us. When taking on the game's villain, the crawler, the player finds themselves surrounded by an ominous black goo. Normally, if a situation like this gets too overwhelming, then you can just retreat to the pause menu and take a breather. Not in Fable 3 though, decide to head into the Sanctuary during this level and the black goo will follow you there and begin invading the increasingly inaccurately named Sanctuary. Thanks a lot, Peter. Have we not suffered enough? Number 7, Undertale. Undertale is a game that brings out the best, worst and, well, mostly the worst of its players. A seemingly cutesy RPG, Undertale is all about decisions, and those decisions are about killing, or not killing, horrible monsters. It's a bit like Hamlet crossed with Dirty Harry. If players choose to not murder any monsters, they are rewarded with one of the game's endings. Another ending comes if the player only kills some monsters, but the ending we're here to discuss is the delightfully named No Mercy ending. Oh, what's that? It's got another name, has it? Oh, well, why don't we just use that one then? Okay, yeah. It's the genocide ending. Great. 
If players choose the right path, i.e. the one where they kill all the monsters, they probably already worked that one out, then they were awarded with the game's third and final ending. While she could be happy with just finishing the game in pacifist mode, true completionists will be haunted by the idea of leaving an ending unseen. Will that compulsion be enough to lead them to murder dozens of innocent monsters? Well, yeah, probably. Gamers can be a nasty bunch sometimes. Number 6. Castlevania Symphony of the Night Castlevania Symphony of the Night is widely regarded to be one of the greatest video games of all time, which is weird considering you can finish the game without completing most of what you're supposed to do. Assuming the role of Dracula's half-human son, players must explore their fangy father's castle before coming face to face with a possessed Richter Belmont, the hero of the previous game. If players can overcome Richter, then the credits roll. However, this is what us in the industry call the stupid idiot ending for stupid idiots. Richter is not the final boss of the game. If players defeat him with the right combination of items, then they actually unlock an entire new castle before coming face to face with Big Daddy Drac himself. Imagine that! Thinking you'd completed a game only to find out that you actually got tricked and all the other children start laughing at you and now you split your trousers right in front of Katie Jones you've had a crush on since you were five. But this same difficulty and reliance on thoroughness is exactly the reason why Symphony of the Night is still so beloved this very day. Now, excuse me, I have to go and win Katie back. It's not what it looks like, Katie. I I don't even like Peppa Pig. Number 5. Batman Arkham Asylum Rocksteady's fantastic Batman Arkham Asylum is as much about the caped crusader's battles with his own demons as it is about the titular facility. In a game literally set in a home for the criminally insane, it's perhaps not surprising that it goes to great lengths to make you feel like you've gone completely cuckoo. This is especially true when Batman does battle with the horrifying Scarecrow. And no, we don't mean Wurzel Gummidge. How was that show for kids? After ingesting Scarecrow's fear toxin, Batman takes a nice stroll down memory lane, and by nice stroll, we mean terrifying crawl, and by memory lane, we mean trauma avenue. Not only does Batman relive the horrors of his parents' deaths, but the player goes through some pretty chilling stuff too, when the game makes us believe it's crashed and restarted. Of course this isn't true, and players are taken back to the start of the game, only this time it's the Joker sending Batman to the asylum, and not the other way around. Still, for a fleeting moment, players are fooled into thinking their entire save file has been wiped, which is enough to strike fear into the hearts of even the hardiest Batman fans. Number 4. Nia Nia, more like w weird, weird, uh, uh, weird. You know what? Forget it. Weird, <clears throat> Nia, sorry, is about as messed up as a video game can get without being declared illegal. And believe me, some of the things in this game should probably be illegal. One of Nia's many mental tortures is the process by which you unlock its so-called ultimate ending. You need to play through most of the game not two times, not three times, not ten times. Actually, you only need to play through it four times. I've just got a bit carried away with the numbers there. But still, if you do unlock the final ending, then the game will literally kill your character, wiping your entire save file and banning you from using that same name on a different playthrough. I'm surprised the game doesn't just reach out of the console and threaten you with a knife. And hang on a second, there's also a remastered version of this game with a fifth ending, where, if you complete it, you can get your files back. I need to lie down. Number 3. Metal Gear Solid Another man who seemingly lives to irritate the gaming community is absolute mad lad Hideo Kojima, the man who wanted to create a floppy disk that smelt like blood. That's 100% real by the way, has put plenty of weird features into his games, including the original Metal Gear Solid. In the game, hero Solid Snake faces off against mind-reading villain Psycho Mantis, presumably in a battle of who has the silliest name. To prove his psychic abilities, Mr. Mantis reads your memory card and taunts you about the other games you enjoy playing. God, I hope it doesn't end up on the worst games ever machine. We can explain, Mr. Mantis! It becomes clear that Mantis is anticipating your next move as you fight. So the only way to beat him is to unplug your controller and plug it into the second port of the console. So is the controller your mind in this analogy? Or is it the port? Or is it the console? Who am I kidding? It's a Kojima game. We could be here for hours and we'd never figure it out. Of course, that's not really the only way to beat him. You can defeat Mantis without resorting to using a second port. It's just much, much harder and far less interesting. But at least we don't have to wee on any mushrooms. Number 2. Eternal Darkness – Sanity's Requiem All of the games on this list might make you think you've gone mad, 
But Eternal Darkness' Sanity Requiem is a game about actually going mad. It was published in 2002 as the first Nintendo title to carry an M rating, and before you ask, no, M does not stand for Mario. I've checked. It's a brutal psychological horror that shares some elements with Resident Evil, but where Eternal Darkness differs is in its sanity mechanics, which are designed to reflect the in-game feelings of madness onto the player's experience. For example, if your character begins to get scared, you might notice the eyes of statues following you around the room, or you might notice your character changes size as you move. As the character descends further and further into madness, the game reacts accordingly and treats you to such joys as hallucinations, blood coming from the ceiling, sudden random deaths, and fourth wall breaks such as the signal on your TV cutting out or the volume going up and down. Eternal Darkness may not have been a commercial success, but in terms of horror games that have an actual tangible effect on the player, they don't come much better than this. Bro! Gotcha, scared you. And number one, Pony Island. On the surface, 2016's Pony Island is that game you play on Google when you've got no internet, except with a pony instead of a dinosaur. However, once you've actually played a bit of this infinite runner, you'll find out it's way, way more than that. See, the game Pony Island is a game within a game also called Pony Island. Confused yet? Me too. In the first layer of the game, you play an old arcade cabinet containing the second layer of the game. What you don't at first realise is that the cabinet has been possessed by the devil and he wants your soul. Jeez, I knew arcades were expensive, but this is ridiculous. You must then do battle with Lucifer alongside the digitised souls of his previous victims, fighting your way through the code of the machine to save those trapped within. But the devil has some tricks up his... uh... Well, Satan doesn't really wear sleeves, so he has tricks up his... Oh dear! Lucifer can employ several real-world tactics to get to you, including contacting you via your Steam account. We would tell you what else he can do, but we don't want to spoil this truly unique gaming experience. At just a couple of hours long, Pony Island crams a lot of brilliance and innovative ideas into a short runtime. Just make sure you don't accidentally let your grandma play this game thinking it's a cutesy animal sanctuary sim. She may never be the same.